So ladies and gentlemen, let me <coughs> welcome you to the uh, next lecture within the inter, uh, interdisciplinary science seminar of our university. This is the last lecture before the holiday break, last lecture of the academic year. And our today's lecturer is Adrian Bejan, J. Jones Distinguished Professor of Mechanical Engineering at Duke University in the United States. Uh, the career and achievements of our guests ideally fit the idea of this interdisciplinary seminar. Professor Bejan uh, was born in Galati in Romania and there simultaneously studied physics and also arts and specifically drawing. Besides talents in science and arts, he also excelled in sports. Indeed, Professor Bejan was once a star player on the Romanian national team in basketball. At the age of 19, after winning a national mathematics contest that earned him a graduate scholarship, Professor Bejan moved to the United States and entered the famous Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He graduated from MIT with PhD in 1975, and after working first at Berkeley and then at the University of Colorado, in 1984 he was appointed a full professor at Duke, another elite American university, where he is now a distinguished professor holding a J.A. Jones chair. His main field of research is thermodynamics, and his major discovery is the constructal law, which he will present uh, here. For the constructal theory, which predicts natural design and its evolution in engineering, scientific, and social systems, Professor Adrian Bejan received the 2018 Benjamin Franklin Medal, previously awarded to such eminent scholars as Noam Chomsky, Stephen Hawking, and Max Planck. Most recently, earlier this year, Professor Bejan was also awarded the Humboldt Research Award for Lifetime Achievement. He also holds honorary degrees from 11 countries and memberships of several prestigious scholarly societies, including Academia Europea. Professor Bejan has written several books and over 600 research articles cited together over 30,000 times. His today's lecture at our interdisciplinary seminar series is organized under the auspices of Academia Europea, Wrocław Knowledge Hub, and the title is Nature, Evolution, and Purpose. Dear Professor, thank you for accepting our invitation. The floor is yours. Thank you very much um, for the introduction and also especially for the invitation to, um, to lecture in, um, in Poland. Uh, this is uh, my first visit to Poland. Uh, and it's, uh, it, is, it is about time that I do this. <coughs> As you heard, I grew up uh, not far from here. In fact, uh, I come from the part of Romania that uh, was once, uh, um, um, let's say, under Poland. That those are the good old days when there was peace in, uh, in the area. And we very much miss those, uh, those days uh, in um, Moldavia. Now, um, I like the idea that your seminar series is uh, interdisciplinary. But uh, my idea about that idea is that uh, interdisciplinary is a really good game, uh, uh, <laughs> provided that you first uh, know the disciplines. Uh, OK. So uh, my lecture today is about uh, uh, getting to know the discipline better. Uh, the discipline uh, to which I'll be alluding without uh, saying much about it is physics, uh, the science of everything. Of course, physics means uh, the everything that is. And I will get to it uh, by using words that uh, normally are not spoken in, uh, in physics. Words that everybody else speaks, especially people in the street, but uh, not the, uh, the, the experts, you see. And the other, the other uh, feature of my uh, presentation is that um, uh, I'll uh, try my best to trick you into discovering that you already know my lecture. You already know it. And uh, so I'll begin with, uh, with uh, two questions, um, especially to those of you who were not born yesterday. Uh, did you notice that uh, that uh, time uh, flies faster as you get older. That uh, from uh, new year to new year, uh, the, uh, the new year is uh, arriving too soon. Um, 
that life is just uh, flying by as you get older. As I said, if you didn't notice, it means you were born yesterday. Uh, here's another question. Uh, did you notice that, um, that you tend to be uh, attracted to things uh, that look beautiful? Yeah, you are so attracted to them that you uh, make sure you don't uh, lose them and make sure nobody steals them from you. Uh, you keep them uh, tight in your wallet. Uh, yes. So, uh, well, there's, a, a, there's physics behind uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, human uh, preferences and uh, perceptions. And, um, and it's uh, good to know those, uh, uh, the, the origins of these uh, perceptions. So I'll start with the second example, which is about beauty. The, uh, the things that, uh, to which I was referring, there are many, and they all have the same shape. <coughs> The um, shape, you go into an art gallery, everything that's hanging on the walls, uh, or most of everything, has this shape. Uh, the shape of my, um, my uh, business card. Uh, I did not have a room here for the credit cards and the train ticket, the plane ticket, and all these other things. Uh, but uh, almost all the flags of nations are shaped this way. And uh, you may have not noticed, but on a page, the page is uh, tall, but what you see on the page is the uh, shape, the paragraphs, the, the images, even the blocks of equations, so those of us who publish the scientific uh, papers, are organized uh, to be seen at a glance, like those rect rectangles. Why is this? Well, it is uh, because uh, the, uh, the human uh, mind uh, perceives, uh, let's say, reflections of the surroundings, reflections that come uh, as inputs from the, uh, from the two eyes. And the two eyes um, are, in fact, uh, scanning the image that's available. And um, by the way, uh, that's uh, my eldest daughter uh, looking at you. Yes, uh, art was mentioned, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, now you get the idea that uh, art and science are basically the same thing. Um, uh, so uh, the, uh, the two eyes are scanning the image in uh, violent uh, bursts of motion called saccade in French. And, um, and the, uh, the, uh, the movement of the eye has a particular time step. Uh, it means it's just a time step in all directions for one eye. It means that the, there's a sweep time in the vertical direction, but the uh, sweep time in the horizontal direction is, 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 um, is uh, sorry, the, the time is the same, but the length of the sweep is uh, greater because there are two eyes lined up on the horizontal. And that uh, means that scanning with the two eyes happens at two speeds. The horizontal speed is uh, greater than the vertical one. And um, you see that on the right hand side. That leads to the very simple homework problem in the bottom. Imagine a um, rectangular area that's to be scanned with two speeds, but uh, you have uh, uh, infinite freedom to change the shape of the, of the rectangular area uh, from uh, very shallow to very tall. It's easy to uh, discover that the area that's um, scanned the fastest is one that has uh, an aspect ratio of uh, three divided by two. Um, similar to, but maybe a little bit more robust than the shape of this particular screen. By the way, all cinema screens and computer screens, um, all these things uh, are, uh, in fact, the same sort of a human preference for uh, seeing something faster, uh, understanding it, meaning grasping uh, what the environment is uh, offering, so that uh, if it's uh, dangerous, you get out of the way faster. If it is attractive, uh, say, a source of food or mate or shelter, you go for it. Uh, all these uh, things that uh, we perceive as beauty or attraction are about um, making uh, the individual's life uh, better, easier, okay? so. That is the, uh, what, uh, what the mind does uh, with its eyes. Now, um, the, uh, 
uh, the scanning of, uh, of, uh, of the surroundings is happening, as I said, in bursts, which means that um, the, uh, the human mind receives uh, not uh, everything in a continuous fashion, uh, like the sand pouring out uh, to the bottom of an hourglass. No, the mind uh, has no time for that uh, and no volume for that. The mind receives changes, changes in the image. And uh, the changes are separated by, um, by a time interval. I call it time lapse. The time lapse, we know this from kinematics, is the ratio of the, uh, the length of travel, the length traveled by the signal divided by the, uh, the speed of that uh, flow. And so that's the little formula <coughs> that explains why um, the, uh, well, first of all, in the formula, the length of, uh, of uh, travel increases as the body gets older, uh, the body grows uh, in time, so every length uh, in the body increases. Uh, the body also ages, uh, there are reasons for the speed of everything that flows through the body to decrease. Um, and uh, the, um, the speed is decreasing because of degradation, uh, the, the path becomes more complex as the body becomes, meaning with bifurcations and the corners, as the body becomes bigger. But the other reason, as we'll see a little bit later, is that in all animal design, the, um, uh, the frequency of uh, muscular movement decreases as the body becomes bigger. Uh, the mouse uh, has a uh, high frequency relative to the, uh, to the elephant, uh, even though the mouse is uh, slow compared with the elephant when it comes to running. But, and so an elderly person, uh, if you pay attention uh, to your relatives, you'll notice that the elderly person has uh, uh, eye movement, in fact everything, facial movement, that's a lot slower than that of the infant, you see. If you... Uh, don't have access to uh, relatives, you can look at your cat from uh, uh, baby cat to uh, adult cat. The cat slows down. All right, so in the formula, the uh, numerator is increasing with age, the uh, denominator decreasing. That means the ratio, which is the time, time lapse, increases uh, in time, meaning with aging. and. Uh, so the clock time, which is of course insensitive to your feelings, uh, it keeps on ticking, never mind the clock, I mean the time interval between sunrise and sunset. Uh, well, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the human mind, uh, with aging, you get the impression that uh, the sunset arrives uh, too soon because as you get older, you, uh, you have uh, fewer and fewer uh, much fewer uh, images uh, uh, landing on your brain than uh, you're used to receiving. Now, uh, to summarize this entire uh, uh, argument, uh, we have uh, perceived changes in images which uh, are uh, happening less and less frequently and uh, uh, relative to uh, the time on the clock, the perceived duration of uh, one time unit on the clock uh, becomes um, a sm uh, shorter. So time distortion or the time misalignment between uh, mind time and uh, clock time uh, is due to these two effects. <coughs> uh, this sort of uh, discovery, which is all from physics, uh, leads, leads uh, uh, me to uh, questioning uh, the ingredients of the argument. Uh, yes, the body grows uh, in time, uh, that's what uh, uh, all these things to do in time. The body, the body is in fact uh, not a chunk of uh, cheese, uh, amorphous, it's not that. The body is a, uh, a, uh, a web of, um, of uh, flows, uh, like the ones I sketched at the top. Uh, I call it a vascular design. I would not call it a net, uh, like people used to like to talk about net, networks, networks, networks. Uh, uh, these things are not nets. You cannot catch fish with a, with a broom, you see. Uh, these are uh, river basins and river deltas. Uh, blood vascularization in the retin, in my muscles. Uh, of course, uh, everything in the lung, uh, airflow has this architecture. And it is the architecture that's uh, required by something I'll show you a little bit later, so that what flows, flows more easily 
uh, between an area and one point or between a volume and one point. Meaning that uh, uh, nature or the world is not the, uh, the uh, uh, travel uh, of uh, Euclid from one point to another one, uh, which is a straight line. That uh, looks simple, but that is not uh, nature itself. Nature is, is, a, is a flow or a connection between um, one point and an infinite number of points. The infinite number of points is area or volume. And the, this natural connection, the one that's uh, more and more easy, uh, 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 the one that's easier and easier for greater access, is uh, arborescent. You see here the uh, vasculature um, um, increasing in size uh, over time. Uh, you can, in fact, I'll show you, uh, predict this, uh, this behavior is known as the S-curve. And that uh, brings me to uh, a phenomenon called growth. Growth, which is uh, the short name for what I just showed you. <clears throat> uh, if you uh, especially if you're in, uh, in business, in economics, you're familiar with this uh, behavior. Um, everything that uh, spreads uh, on an area or is collected from an area uh, has a flow uh, rate, meaning a territory that's covered in this fashion. Uh, on the upper left is the growth of a population uh, of uh, brewers east. Uh, here are curves for a population of people in history with uh, portable radios, uh, people with television sets, uh, people reading one of my, meaning uh, citing one of my uh, research papers uh, in the year um, 2010. Uh, S curves everywhere. If you don't like these things, uh, here are some um, more meaningful curves. Uh, these are the facts, okay, the facts. Uh, the uh, power production in the U.S., uh, this is the, the juice that uh, sets the entire uh, U.S. Uh, society in motion. A, uh, an S-curve that um, is essentially uh, uh, close to its uh, plateau. Uh, the other physical measure of uh, the power production in the U.S. is the miles-driven uh, per year in the U.S., that is an S-curve that has uh, reached its plateau. Uh, not, meaning none of these flows in society are I increasing in, uh, in size and territory to get out of hand. When you read in, uh, in the news that uh, uh, population explosion, uh, the world is uh, running out of uh, I don't know what because of exponential growth of this or that, um, well, you heard it from me. Uh, you are being lied to. Uh, these are the facts. And at the bottom is the curve of the world, po world population increasing in S-curve fashion, according to the UN, and predicted to reach its plateau in 2050. Why? Because the U.S. population that's been growing, obviously uh, alive and movement, moving is driven by the same juice that drives all the automobiles and everything else that uh, keeps, uh, keeps our uh, society alive. <clears throat> so, now, um, I'm a, uh, an educator, so when I see something that uh, looks like a uh, pattern uh, without uh, uh, having been predicted, I think that I have a very, very simple homework problem to, pr to propose, first to myself. So here's how to predict the S-curve. Um, the territory, which is shown as a square, is uh, to be covered by a flow in this particular uh, calculation or argument. The flow enters through one point uh, on the left. The, everything in nature, in fact, you could look uh, by spilling uh, milk on the ground or water on the ground, or even better, uh, if you were like me, you grow, uh, grew up in the vicinity of horses, you look... Uh, you look under the horse as the horse urinates. In, in the beginning, the spreading is done through uh, fingers, through pre-existing uh, channels or cracks in the ground. That's called the invasion. The finger of wetness re uh, reaches the other boundary of the territory, but the wetting continues, and it continues laterally. In the second phase called consolidation, now, the area that grows monotonically, shown here in, the, in dark, during invasion, 
the area increases in size in accelerating fashion. That's the first arc of the, of the curve. During the second phase, consolidation, the area continues to increase, but it does so in decelerating fashion. So next, if you're into making drawings, uh, it's like using two French curves. I don't know, you're too young to remember, before there, were, there was computer graphics, uh, people like me carried the, these precious uh, templates in the pocket. You, uh, you splice together these two arcs, and what you get is the S curve. Uh, from an argument as uh, uh, voluminous as the back of an envelope. So the S-curve is uh, predictable, and, but what do you do with it? Well, uh, with it, in your mind, you look at, uh, at reality. In this case, uh, a square uh, is the size of the territory, the territory from which oil is being extracted. The territory is fixed, it costs money, you see. In this case, it's a desert of fixed size uh, uh, underground in Saudi Arabia. Historically, so the size is fixed, but what changes on this territory is the configuration of the channels. Historically, in the beginning, uh, oil wells were needle-like. Look at the old the photographs and, uh, you know, from uh, 100 years ago and earlier. But over time, technology of drilling has, uh, has uh, uh, improved immensely. Uh, now you can drill uh, anything in any direction imaginable. And so these, um, these wells, or call them galleries if you talk about uh, mining coal or uh, other uh, um, minerals, uh, have become arborescent. So, so the architecture is morphing, what has been morphing over time. Uh, evolution, evolution is the phenomenon, uh, meaning the movie, in this case just uh, three, uh, three uh, snapshots with three uh, um, frames, three, three frames from the film are shown, the movie in which the drawing is uh, changing. Uh, also, because the square is not changing in the size, uh, growth is not happening. So in this particular size, you see that the growth, the phenomenon, the growth of the uh, human body that I showed you earlier as an S-curve, is not to be confused with the phenomenon of evolution. <coughs> For the phenomenon of evolution, which is in fact uh, um, uh, visible uh, in, uh, if you look at the technology evolution, or if you um, ask yourself, as I did growing up, uh, what is the origin of the Danube Delta as a drawing that looks just like the vascularization of, uh, of the retina or uh, the vascularization of the inside surface of the, of the um, uh, chicken egg as the embryo is growing. It's one drawing, one evolutionary design for, to, to Rationalize this uh, sort of uh, coincidence after coincidence. I came up with a statement in uh, more than 20 years ago. Uh, I call it the constructor law. There's a reason for the word constructor. If you're curious, I'll tell you uh, during uh, questions and answers at the end of this lecture. I said for a uh, flow system to persist in time, this is the physics definition of uh, to be a live, live uh, system. It must evolve with freedom such that it provides greater access to its currents. Uh, the um, little movie in the green is uh, from uh, laboratory measurements uh, on the floor um, of the laboratory covered uh, uh, horizontally with sand, uniform rain falling from above. Uh, the uh, system shown in green is not growing. The floor is wet, but from movie screen to movie screen, uh, the drawing is changing. That is evolution. The direction of the movie tape is the direction in, with, in which time is, uh, is, uh, is uh, changing, or increasing, if you will. Uh, incidentally, here you have the physics, uh, uh, the physics uh, definition of time. Time is not, uh, is not uh, what my watch indicates. Uh, prehistoric uh, humans were aware not of time. They were aware of changes, changes in uh, the perceived images from the environment, changes. 
these changes were so common that uh, that from pre prehistory our uh, you know ancestors were convinced that the tomorrow will be different than today. So time, Kronos, is the the word, the name for this human impression that. Um, that, well, uh, the present is different than the past, and then the uh, future will be different than the present. So time is a huma human perception. It's not this, uh, some uh, number that comes from a Swiss watch. And another thing that uh, this definition of, uh, of, uh, of uh, time, or if you want life, uh, as physics uh, provides, is the aha uh -huh, that uh, evolution is not uh, something that was invented by Darwin. Uh, evolution is, uh, comes from the Latin uh, verb evolvo, evolvere, which means to uh, literally to roll out and uh, roll forth. Uh, its antonym, which is revolvo, revolver, is the uh, origin of the uh, name uh, for the revolver, you know, uh, recoil if you want. So. Evolvo, evolvere, if you, uh, again, if you know uh, Latin, you uh, get the idea that you're watching uh, uh, childbirth. Uh, birth uh, from whom? Birth from uh, she who gives birth to everything. Uh, that uh, person in, uh, in uh, ancient thought was uh, natura, nature. So uh, evolution is uh, a um, phenomenon of all physics, because uh, physics is the Greek uh, word for nature. Get it? So evolution is physics. Uh, it, it happens to be present in biology, in technology, in social organization, but these are details. Uh, evolution is physics. With this uh, constructed law, uh, my students, but also colleagues of mine, and then uh, <laughs> more recently competitors of uh, mine, have been able to predict um, uh, the past and future of, uh, of evolutionary phenomena. I have a list here that's uh, worth uh, uh, reading. Uh, river basins, uh, uh, crack, cracks in the drying mud, uh, turbulence, predictable now. Turbulence is a uh, evolutionary design, a constructal uh, design a phenomenon. Uh, respiration. Respiration is not only that drawing which I made, it is also the rhythm of uh, in and out, inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling is actually the, uh, the, uh, the image uh, that uh, speaks of uh, life or living and soul in uh, most of the, the languages of Europe. Um, uh, with a constructor law, we can predict when a, a drop of ink or a drop of blood will uh, become a splat on a surface or a splash. Uh, the growth of the snowflake, the so-called growth of the snowflake comes from the constructive law. The snowflake is a flow system for heat uh, flowing from the solid to the colder surroundings. And then all of uh, animal uh, life, in this case locomotion, swimming, running, and flying, is uh, entirely predictable from uh, this uh, very simple statement of physics. So that brings me to uh, the field of evolution as physics with um, some of this, these uh, 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 predictive achievements. <coughs> uh, the story starts with why things are moving. Things are moving because uh, uh, as uh, entities, we call them theronomics uh, systems, a system is a, a well-defined uh, region in space. Uh, uh, unambiguously defined. In such things, if uh, the input is, um, is energy as uh, heating from uh, burning of uh, fuel or from ingesting food, uh, then uh, through contrivance, which means a, a, a flow configuration inside the system, which is shown in blue, then the system delivers work or per unit time power to, to the environment which contains the user of the particular uh, contrivance. There's a remainder called the heat rejection to the ambient. We learned this from uh, thermodynamics um, uh, a long time ago. And uh, this is um, basically an old uh, lesson in thermodynamics. 
my contribution to uh, to the old lesson is to to ask the question that uh, uh, should have been ask, asked a long time ago. The question is, what happened to the produced power? Uh, you, see, you have the uh, the so-called engines in the blue uh, space, the engine design with the heating, uh, the heat input, the work output, and the heat rejection uh, going vertically down. The work is destroyed immediately uh, for the purpose. Now you get the word purpose for the purpose of moving something horizontally on the surface of the earth. This movement uh, horizontal is in fact opposed by the environment. For the movement to happen, the mover has to get the environment out of the way. Meaning the mover has to have impact on the environment. You want uh, no impact on the environment, as you read in the uh, scientific news uh, all the time, and also the, the speeches of politicians, then that means you're arguing for no movement. Well, you know from the definition of uh, life in physics, uh, no movement means no life. So you have a choice here. Uh, the choice is, uh, of course, life, which means all these things in the rectangular box, um, which means movement uh, horizontally. And uh, in, the, um, in the green space, we have the, um, the uh, configurations that uh, are normally not discussed. They act as brakes. Brakes, meaning movers um, uh, getting the environment out of the way. The brakes dissipate the work into heat that's rejected to the ambient. So um, <coughs> uh, the uh, story uh, seen from a distance is in fact very simple and very boring. It is that uh, the fire is burning and that entire heat current is dumped 100% uh, into, into the ambient or maybe in the cold sky. But in the meantime, in the rectangular box, because of this uh, tandem of uh, engine and brake uh, move and because of the presence of configuration, both in the engine and in the brakes, uh, there, there is movement on the horizontal, meaning there is a re Newell and a reshaping of the surface of the earth, or a remixing, if you will, of the surface of the earth um, for the purpose of, uh, well, <laughs> accelerating from decade to decade the uh, reigning uh, geological age. Okay? Uh, here is another painting that, 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 that tells the same story. Uh, I uh, invoke here the uh, uh, elementary school uh, lesson of the circuit executed by water in nature. Uh, it is a, uh, a uh, wheel that's uh, driven by the so-called earth engine. Uh, the earth engine, which in this case goes uh, counterclockwise, is uh, not uh, accelerating to infinite speed. Uh, it uh, reaches a finite speed because of the brakes, the brakes that constantly dissipate the power that this engine would be producing. But the message of this new drawing is that um, <coughs> the, the, uh, the design, the configuration of, uh, of what you see in the picture is uh, uh, facilitated, meaning the actual mixing that goes on, facilitated by flow architectures, architecture for the flow of water on the surface of, uh, uh, of the ground, meaning river basin and river delta. Um, there, there are extended surfaces like fins uh, rising from the, sur from the ground into the dry wind. That's called vegetation. Now we have uh, the physics prediction that uh, given enough time, vegetation should occur on the ground in order to dry the ground faster than uh, otherwise. We have uh, not only uh, river water sweeping horizontally earth, we have uh, vehicles of water uh, uh, bowls of water with uh, legs and uh, fish tailing called animals uh, doing the same thing. Of course, we have evaporation from the, uh, from the surface of, uh, surfaces of lakes and oceans, uh, putting the uh, water back into the um, cold wind. And so uh, the thing to keep in mind is that the, the painting uh, brings together drawings that refer to the animate and the inanimate together. And that is, in fact, the power of physics. Uh, physics is about everything. Uh, everything, animate and inanimate, obeys the laws of physics. Why is that? Because they are the laws, you see. 
had it not been that way, then the, the, the laws would have been rejected a long time ago. Um, uh, geophysics, uh, biophysics, and the social organization uh, are present in this particular uh, drawing. <coughs> I'll spend um, a little more time on one example of this sort. It's about predicting uh, all the features of uh, so-called animal locomotion. Uh, well, uh, animal locomotion is one, uh, regardless of, uh, or in spite of the fact that uh, at first glance, uh, uh, flying is not to be confused with running or with swimming. In fact, um, um, I got a big kick out of this uh, uh, theoretical step because before I decided to take it, um, like everybody else, I thought that uh, uh, gravity is a, is a big uh, problem in uh, flying and in running because the body has to get off the ground. But uh, the uh, swimming is not that way because the fish, you see, is uh, neutrally buoyant. So, uh, so uh, that's a big problem for the uh, uh, mind that's uh, propelled by theory, by the uh, uh, desire to predict. It turns out, and I have a personal story about how I got the <laughs> idea, uh, it turns out that uh, swimming is no different than flying and running because uh, the fish is neutrally buoyant only when the fish is asleep, meaning stationary. To move uh, horizontally on the map of, the, of, of Earth, the fish has to get the water out of the way. Except that the water, the body of water that's being displaced by, the, uh, by, by swimming uh, has... Uh, only one way to go, which is up, because the bottom is rigid. The upper surface is, uh, is uh, completely free to, uh, to, to be deformed. So that means that the fish, like all the other uh, movers, is a weightlifter. This is why the, uh, the swimming champions are basically uh, as impressive uh, uh, specimens as all the other specimens that uh, lift weights, such as uh, sprinters and, uh, you know, basketball players, okay? So, um, so with this idea, it was possible to predict, again, on, a, on uh, the back of a few other envelopes, that uh, the speeds of all these uh, movers should uh, be uh, given by particular formulas in which the speed uh, is proportional to the body mass to the power one-sixth. Uh, the, uh, the body of the, of the uh, mover should... Uh, should um, 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 have, uh, um, let's call it frequency of a leg stride, the uh, wings flapping or fish tailing, frequency that decreases uh, as the body size increases, decreases with a particular formula. The uh, body should be a weight lifter, meaning stronger in proportion, see, force, the lifting force proportional to the weight of the body. Uh, uh, should be a a, a, a mover of a bigger uh, mass to a greater distance. Every such mover should have a longer lifespan. Imagine this now, life, life span predicted from this uh, idea. And life travel, that means the wiggle uh, uh, path uh, described by Adrian during Adrian's lifetime, the length of that uh, never questioned uh, uh, path is predictable uh, from, uh, from, uh, from the constructor law. And um, as I'll show you a little bit later, uh, animals uh, have these features the same way as the perform performance athletes. Now, uh, animal locomotion. So here's how, uh, why, why science is fun. Uh, if you have the idea that uh, all animal locomotion is one, then you have the audacity to plot on the same graph all these uh, previously uh, dissimilar things, swimmers, uh, runners, and flyers. Um, here we have the speeds of all these uh, moving bodies versus the body mass. The range of, uh, uh, occupied by all these uh, systems is immense. And you see that um, the flyers, by the way, there are two lines drawn here. One is uh, the theoretical prediction for flyers, the bottom one, dashed is the theoretical prediction for swimmers. The reason there is a factor of 10 <coughs> uh, gap between the two uh, has to do with the fact that the medium in which swimming is happening 
is of a greater density than the uh, than obviously atmospheric air, which characterizes the uh, the, the flyers. But the agreement is uh, is extraordinary. Uh, it's surprising, also very pleasing, also intriguing, because it shows uh, that the human machine uh, specimens, uh, meaning the um, uh, airplanes with people inside, are uh, apparently deviating from uh, from the pre from the theoretical line. Uh, very recently, we showed that that's in fact not true. Uh, the airplanes fall above uh, the birds uh, because uh, uh, in making this plot in 2006, uh, I did not take into account the fact that the density at the altitude where the airplanes is, are flying is uh, much lower than uh, the density of air near the ground. So if you if you account for these differences in uh, in uh, the medium itself, then everything falls on one line. So um, theory uh, unifies uh, an entire world of uh, observations. That includes, of course, um, um, performance athletics. You know that uh, records are meant to be broken. These are the winning speeds in the, in the, in the 100 meter. Uh, sprint, um, Olympics were the world uh, championship. You uh, would expect a graph that shows uh, uh, speed versus time, except that uh, I had the idea that that's uh, not an interesting graph. The interesting graph is speed versus body size. <coughs> so uh, the, uh, this kind of graph uh, leads uh, us uh, statistically to discovery that uh, the winning uh, speeds where all these uh, champions are uh, statistically correlated by the same, by the same uh, formula as all the other runners. Runners are shown here in green. Uh, so uh, that's uh, for uh, the fastest runners, and uh, here's for the fastest swimmers, the same sort of discovery that, uh, that um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the human uh, swimmer is uh, no different than, uh, than uh, the other swimmers. I will tease you with, uh, with uh, the uh, question that's obvious only in retrospect, which is why in this uh, evolution of two sports, the, um, the fastest uh, have uh, segregated themselves uh, naturally into two groups, uh, West African origin versus uh, European origin. That two, meaning this, uh, let's call it a divergent evolution, is uh, predictable from uh, the constructor law. But that's a detail that I will uh, skip right now. The, uh, the movement to which I was referring is uh, uh, now um, um, uh, present on the slide of, uh, of uh, the evolution of uh, human uh, society from uh, not much movement in the, in the beginning during hunting and ga uh, gathering to uh, movement today. This uh, story is uh, told in three ways. On the uh, horizontal <coughs> is the amount uh, moved. Uh, the band was uh, moving uh, essentially nothing in comparison with what, uh, uh, say, uh, Poland is uh, moving today on, uh, on the ground. Uh, people, freight, uh, all these other things. Uh, the, uh, the second way is to uh, plot uh, on the vertical the, uh, the, uh, the, the rate at which uh, fuel is, uh, is consumed in order to produce the power that, um, that drives all this movement. Uh, the third way is plotted on the diagonal. This is uh, my favorite way, which, uh, which is about the same thing, but expressed as the increase in uh, uh, population on, on Earth, the increase in advancement. There are many uh, names for it, if you go in the history, especially history of Europe, um, and the increase in wealth, wealth. <laughs> Uh, we're now uh, very wealthy compared with uh, our parents and the grandparents' generations, and of course much earlier, and increase in freedom. Every step in this uh, direction of uh, uh, evolution upward and to the right has been toward greater freedom. Why? Because uh, the technology of uh, power generation has been uh, improving. Uh, recently, we published uh, another uh, predictive, predictive demonstration of the same phenomenon, meaning the, uh, the physics origin of uh, social organization. 
this time with the example of, <coughs> of producing and distributing heated water to a population on an area. Uh, the area is fixed, meaning the population uh, size is fixed. But the configuration in which uh, the heating of the water and the distributing of that water is, uh, is uh, engineered is uh, free to vary. Now, in um, during um, hunting and gathering, by the way, uh, heating water is as old as the uh, harnessing of fire. That was uh, 1.5 million years ago. So uh, we're talking about uh, 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 humans with fire in this particular comparison. In the beginning, the, uh, the uh, water was heated in uh, one uh, pot in one hut. So uh, it was individual. The uh, design was uh, uh, uniform. Uh, we can call this uh, beginning of social organization as equality. Then, as the, uh, as the uh, society advanced, meaning people became more knowledgeable, knowledgeable and all that, meaning to the right, uh, the consumption or the need to have uh, heated water increased for all the obvious reasons. And uh, from this emerged the discovery that, um, that uh, it is more economical to, uh, to have, um, <coughs> to have uh, water being heated in a bigger and bigger container. You know this uh, from uh, the design of the uh, um, um, warm-blooded animal. The tiny animal uh, loses uh, heat to the ambient uh, at uh, a rate that's uh, high relative to the size of the animal. A big animal, say uh, the uh, hippo or the whale, is in fact uh, self-insulated and uh, not losing much heat. So that's called economies of scale meaning bigger is better for the purpose of uh, doing uh, something economically. In fact, uh, I should have mentioned uh, that on the vertical, I am plotting the, um, the direction in which uh, less fuel is wasted uh, in the, for the purpose of producing hot water and distributing it. Distributing it. Uh, fuel is wasted in the heating water. Uh, because the heater, the hot pot, is uh, losing weight, but also uh, heat is lost during the transmission of the hot water from source to, to user. So in this direction, upward on the diagonal, we discover the natural emergence of the so-called uh, phenomenon of economies of scale. We discover the fact that, um, that uh, the users who are, not, who are now not producing water but using water are gathering themselves around a central uh, uh, producer. That's called organization. Uh, the other names that come uh, uh, to describe this are networks and trees or vasculature. Uh, the difference between the producer and the distributor and the user is known as the division of labor, uh, trade, uh, money, these words, uh, social fabric. But at the very top, what emerges is, in fact, the design of everything that's produced and uh, distributed on Earth today. It is one uh, where, uh, uh, say, the producers are uh, uh, large and few, and then the users are uh, distributed hierarchically, uh, the users and the distributors hierarchically around the user. They are smaller and, and many. The name for that is hierarchy or inequality. So from bottom left, to upper right, we have social organization having evolved naturally from uh, uniformity to non-uniformity or from equality to inequality. Now, uh, all these things I've shown you, uh, they matter a lot to, um, to the discipline that I teach, which is thermodynamics. The um, discipline uh, was, uh, took shape uh, 150 years ago. Uh, through uh, obviously the work of uh, far-sighted individuals who uh, discovered uh, for fun that uh, a successful doctrine called caloric theory uh, was in fact uh, of the same nature, of the same physics as another successful doctrine much older called uh, uh, mechanics or mechanical theory. Uh, the two of them together in the word uh, thermodynamics, which means uh, uh, power from heating, uh, 
that, uh, of course, was the birth of thermodynamics. When I started my career, uh, it occurred to me that uh, heat transfer, which is uh, also known as heat transmission, um, at the time was being taught that way as a separate discipline at MIT, uh, that heat transfer is, in fact, a long lost child of caloric theory. So I brought it into thermodynamics uh, uh, 40 years ago. And now with uh, the constructor law, I am um, uh, finally bringing in thermodynamics the uh, the obvious, which is that these things that, uh, that uh, are driven by power from fire have uh, not only flow configuration, but they have freedom to morph. In other words, they have evolution, and they have direction, or purpose, if you want, of uh, evolutionary design, and the name for that direction is time, as a human perception. Now, when audiences uh, hear me talk about uh, these uh, predictable things, um, uh, quite often, especially if the audience is uh, occupied by biologists, uh, I hear uh, a pushback uh, with, uh, consisting of counterexamples. But, uh, you know, uh, not everything is that way. There are exceptions. Uh, the cheetah is not that big, but the cheetah is faster than uh, uh, the biggest an uh, elephant, you see, things like that. And uh, so diversity. <laughs> um, is diversity contradicting what I showed you previously? Uh, I asked myself. And uh, I like to make drawings, so here's diversity. Um, where not, no one is to confuse the, uh, the elephant with a cat. One is big, the other one small. But uh, that's diversity. But when you draw these animals all to have the same size, you get a different uh, perception of diversity and you have the introduction to a new question. Drawn the same size, you discover that, um, that the, uh, the cat is mainly belly and the elephant is mainly legs. The legs uh, together constitute the lifting organ. So the body, in the uh, mind of the good teacher, uh, in the simplest, has uh, two uh, organs or two components, the lifting organ and the everything else. And uh, it is possible, again, from the uh, constructed law and everything else uh, that uh, we published to, to, to predict that the bigger animal, in bigger animals, the lifting organ should occupy a greater fraction of the size of the body. So tiny animal, mainly body, not legs. Big animal, uh, progressively, mainly lifting organ and uh, smaller, smaller body. This uh, we're able, I was able to predict in uh, this book that you'll see at the end of my lecture called The Physics of Life. And the prediction holds uh, equally for all the movers, not just the terrestrials shown in the uh, middle uh, uh, row. Uh, the flyers are the same way. Tiny hummingbird, uh, small wings, big body. Uh, the other one is a um, condor, <coughs> and uh, or I think that's what it is. Uh, it's mainly wings, mainly wings. Look at the swimmers. I should have drawn a guppy, you know, even smaller fish, uh, with um, essentially insignificant, uh, um, you know, flappers or flippers. At the other end, the whale is essentially a tail, a whole body that's uh, snaking through the water. Um, okay, so uh, so diversity itself is predictable, and it comes from the same principle. Now, along with this power to predict comes something even more astonishing. It is the fact that uh, these movers, each of them, has its own population. And the population of the uh, smallest is huge. The population of the biggest is tiny. The numbers of uh, moving bodies. And there is an alignment, according to uh, the theory, which turns out to be um, um, supported by uh, data as we've just published in Applied Physics Reviews. So uh, the hierarchy of populations on this Earth that's, cov that's covered by all sorts of movers, that too is predictable. 
So uh, this is the concluding uh, chapter of my talk, hierarchy. Why does it happen? Well, it happens because of economies of scale. Our movement, the movement of everything on an area from uh, river water to uh, people in an airport is uh, of two kinds, uh, uh, long and fast on a vehicle, meaning riding, and hand in glove with walking. Walking is uh, short and slow. It's just like uh, scanning this area called the airport uh, with uh, the, those two eyes uh, from the beginning of my speech. And the airport, for that reason, has a uh, particular shape to be the best airport in the world. Uh, that was discovered by uh, the builders of the Atlanta airport in the mid-50s. That is uh, long before I came up with the uh, prediction. And that's why today the most advanced airports um, in the world, the ones that, uh, that uh, get the prize for the best airport uh, every year, are unwittingly, or maybe wittingly, copying the Atlanta airport in, a in the construction of every new terminal. Uh, freight is moved on, uh, on Earth the same way. Uh, few big, uh, fast, uh, long-running trucks carrying the same stuff as a fleet of uh, smaller, slower, and more numerous uh, vehicles uh, proceeding transversely. The food chain is uh, the same design. The uh, automobile assembly, assembly plant floor is the same design. The floor of the slaughterhouse is the same design. And uh, that brings me to the biggest uh, picture of this uh, kind. It is uh, the, the movement of uh, people all over the world. This is uh, an image from uh, uh, measurements made by uh, NASA satellites, measurements of the condensation trails left behind all flying aircraft about uh, 20 years ago. Uh, the whole globe is uh, flying. It's shown in blue. But uh, sooner or later, uh, all these uh, bodies, uh, people in airplanes, have to fly through the two chambers of the only one heart, uh, which is, uh, as you see it here, uh, over the North Atlantic. The reason for the position of the heart is historical. But uh, you get the idea that um, because the movement is obviously hierarchical, the consumption of fuel on Earth is hierarchical. Naturally, this design was not imposed by a dictator. This just happened out of the desire of the whole world to, <laughs> to, to have access with, uh, with uh, less and less effort. And when you, uh, when you hear uh, politicians um, um, belly aching that uh, the world should become more uh, uh, egalitarian in the consumption of fuel, meaning the, one, the, uh, the, the countries that uh, burn more should burn less and those that burn not too much should burn more. Well, uh, that uh, kind of desire uh, will uh, not be uh, answered because it goes against nature, you see, meaning against the physics. So fuel movement together are uh, one uh, way to, uh, to understand the hierarchy being natural on Earth. The other way is to look at uh, what I plotted here in the square with a diagonal. On the abscissa is the annual uh, uh, fuel consumption in uh, every country on, uh, on the globe. And uh, on the ordinate is the, is the annual wealth of each of those uh, uh, groups. You discover here empirically, these are the facts, that uh, wealth, which is the language of economists and the business people, uh, and uh, fuel used or movement, which is the language of the physicist, are in fact the two sides of the same coin. And the coin is the movement of uh, humanity or human life on, on, on the globe. Fuel is uh, used for all those the things that sustain human life, fuel use is uh, hierarchical, naturally, and so is the distribution of wealth on Earth uh, hierarchical, naturally, <coughs> meaning unavoidably. The other thing that, uh, this is now a conclusion, <laughs> the other thing about uh, the hierarchy is that just like the floods, uh, the uh, the, uh, the big mover is unstoppable. It is uh, destined to invade, to move over the, uh, the um, 
territory in front of it if the territory in front of it is uh, uh, less of a mover, like the marsh, you see. So here we have an advanced society with uh, greater technology. You can imagine all sorts of examples from uh, human history all the way to uh, mechanized military, if you want. Uh, that sort of, uh, uh, call it clash or, uh, or contrast, uh, spells out the movement of one into the other. It explains, incidentally, uh, uh, the uh, migration of uh, Europeans across the Atlantic to populate, and, uh, populate North America and set it in motion according to European culture. And that happened because what you see here, it, is, uh, uh, it happened through the evolution of uh, uh, contrivances. In this case, <laughs> the crossing of the Atlantic uh, happened because the, the technology of boating uh, improved uh, from the Egyptian gallery to uh, one of the uh, uh, ships of Columbus to uh, one of the ships of the fleet of Napoleon. Uh, is the same sort of uh, evolutionary movie that you can, uh, in fact, uh, present to uh, school children uh, with images from the history of the automobile. And uh, that uh, pretty much uh, concludes my presentation with a very brief summary of uh, what, uh, what you've heard. First of all, if you want to read more, uh, please uh, um, read uh, my book, The Physics of Life. The Evolution of Everything, which is now uh, about two years old, meaning it's extremely cheap. So, uh, so this is highly accessible. Uh, but the, uh, the, uh, the trick behind the, the book, the book of physics, is that it invites you to, uh, to look at the subject, to look at the discipline, to think of it uh, by using words that are normally not present in a book of physics, access freedom, time defined as physics, purpose, direction, or uh, if you want the objective, uh, proportions, beauty, diversity, hierarchy, all predicted. And that includes, of course, evolution, which uh, I think I've shown uh, convincingly that uh, evolution is a phenomenon and principle of all physics. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now the lecture is open for discussion. I welcome your comments and questions. There is one. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, it's a very interesting lecture. I'll have to digest it uh, a little further. But I just wanted to ask you, because you made a couple of comments uh, alluding to, in your words, the belly aching of politicians. Uh, and so you also mentioned things like fuel burning and heat to the environment. So I wanted to know what your thoughts are on global warming and climate disruption and what your, uh, <clears throat> what your predictions are about that and uh, what you think about it. Well, uh, uh, I hope you're not surprised if you hear that I've already published that because you see I'm uh, arguing here that uh, I've thought of everything, you see, because uh, I like to tell jokes. But uh, global warming is, um, is physics, physics. It's been, according to the constructed law, uh, in several publications, uh, not all my publications, has been predicted in, uh, in several steps. First of all, uh, the physics of global warming is all very old. It's called the greenhouse effect. Uh, or uh, these days, uh, the urban heat island effect. Uh, these are uh, predictable from um, the physics of uh, fluids or the fluid mechanics, okay? Um, uh, however, uh, if you know the constructor law and you see the, uh, the atmospheric shell, excuse me, as the uh, uh, engines, that drives its wheels with the winds and the uh, water circulating, okay? An engine, an engine has design. Uh, and then if you uh, ask the additional question of how should this engine be configured so that it, uh, it, um, it uh, moves uh, the most with its wheels, okay? Uh, 
then you end up, uh, to your own surprise, predicting climate. Climate in the steady state. Climate uh, that it should have uh, three temperature zones. It should have uh, wind, winds with a particular speed. You see, you predict climate. So that was the first success of the constructor law applied to uh, answering your question. Most recently, with colleagues from uh, France and Portugal, um, I was able to uh, make this sort of uh, um, uh, scientific paper uh, have a message with respect to, respect to climate that has variability in time. Variability due to the fact that um, because of uh, all sorts of effects, uh, obviously human presence, but also volcanic eruption, the radiative properties of the atmosphere uh, may change, you see. So as an input into the theory, the constructor theory of climate prediction, comes the, um, the uh, changes in the, um, the uh, you know, transmissivity and absorptivity of, uh, of uh, the atmospheric layer that are likely to change over time. So the challenge to the reader is, uh, you, you tell my paper uh, what those changes will be during the next 10 years. If you know that from atmospheric uh, experts who look at particulates and other things, the density of which is increasing in time at uh, certain rates or uh, in time on certain areas on the globe. Uh, if you have that input at your disposal, then with it, you put it into my uh, uh, theory, constructive theory of time-dependent climate, and you know to predict uh, climate change. So our paper um, uh, assumes uh, also several inputs from readers such as yourself. If the change will be this, then here is the future climate. If the change in the atmospheric radiative properties is this, here, is, here are the main uh, features, features, uh, temperatures and winds and stuff of, uh, of the climate during that period, say 10 years from now. So the burden is on uh, the atmospheric physicist to tell us to predict the future of the radiative properties of the atmosphere. Uh, if that is available, say in the convincing fashion, then, uh, then one could uh, easily uh, communicate to the world what uh, these temperature will be. Okay, so the answer is yes, uh, it's doable, it has been done, except that the unknown, the unknown is uh, meaning the lack of certainty is in uh, predicting what will be not the climate itself, but the, the radiative properties of the, uh, of the atmosphere. Now that you uh, took me on this uh, slope of, uh, of uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> climbing out on a limb, you see a tree limb, I'm taking a chance to tell you. Uh, I get excited when I hear your question. Uh, so, uh, global warming? Well, that's an invitation to being creative. What should the people, sorry, <laughs> let me predict what people will be doing because of uh, uh, global warming. Uh, they are not going to start killing each other to decrease the density of the population. The people from the coastal uh, areas will, of course, uh, vote for uh, survival, which means that they will be engaging in a new technology of urban development, one of invading the water as the water is invading the land. It means constructing um, uh, fingers of, meaning artificial, fingers of, um, of, uh, of um, urban, urban territory, fingers or islands uh, in, the, uh, in, in places uh, on the ocean where previously populations were not, uh, were not residing. So uh, what, is, uh, what will be happening through human ingenuity and the availability of power to be used with purpose is that the population that, was, that would have been displaced by the invading waters is, is I like to say, simply reconfiguring its territory. Uh, you see, 
uh, like uh, one new Venice after another new Venice after another new Venice. It will, of course, uh, take uh, not only uh, power, which means money, because you know uh, all of this eventually, wealth means money, right? Meaning movement means money. Uh, it will take that, or it will take ingenuity. So it is actually good news that uh, the problems of the future will be new, new, unheard of, and therefore their solutions will be uh, highly satisfying intellectually, surprising, never seen before, but they are predictable, you see. Thank you. Further questions or comments? very much for your lecture. I have a question because the physics of life, okay, but uh, the life for us is uh, security also. There is no uh, information about it because for human being for, uh, for us uh, is important for me. Uh, exam for example, why don't you use the mass multiplied by speed? There is, a, in physics, there is the the very important uh, That's parameter, mass yeah. uh, multiplying by uh, speed. Right. Mm -hmm. In, if the mass and uh, and uh, speed g uh, rising, uh, the, the, safe, uh, the, the safety is less, I suppose. I don't know. What do you mean by safety? Safety. Uh, Our <laughs> for example, meaning, meaning the opposite of death? Uh, safety is the, the plan, for example. Uh, if you, uh, the plan is crash, crashed, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I see. Well, uh, in... Um, you, if you have a bike, for example, <coughs> bike, bike, uh, the mass of bike is five kilo, yes? For example. I, uh, no, wait a minute. You got to speak slower because I don't understand you. So, um, slower, slower. Mm -hmm. So, repeat the last thing you said. Uh, the bike, uh, uh, the, the weight of bike is about five, five kilo. The, the human, bicycle, you human, mean. human mass is about 80 kilos, yes? Sure. So together, 85 kilo. Yes. Mass multiplying by speed, okay? And? So uh, the bike is a uh, safe uh, uh, device for us, the most safe. In my opinion, but uh, for example, plane <laughs> have a mass and but a very uh, big speed, yes, also. So uh, the safe, safe, safety for us, uh, s more safe uh, for us is moving by bike, yes. But you cannot reach uh, uh, long distance, so long, so long distance as. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, but the uh, the. Um, uh, the urge of uh, anything that moves, animal or inanimate, uh, is to have access, to spread, uh, to get to the other side, uh, because you see the other side is greener. Okay, see. but uh, I am talking about yeah, but, but the I, device. I can, uh, the human no, but, but I can give you an example of something that's even more safe. It is uh, to be without the bike, meaning to just uh, walk. Yes, I understand. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, the, uh, that's uh, the, uh, the prehistoric uh, man uh, who was basically a troglodyte, uh, a person uh, who did not need the, uh, to know the alphabet in order to, uh, to keep on walking. Uh, that sort of life uh, turned out to be um, um, uh, replaceable by the life of the sapiens, uh, the life of the sapiens with the technology and so on because this more complicated design, you call it a bicycle or a motorcycle, yes. is, a, uh, is a greater facilitator of the movement of the body. Uh, and uh, I'm glad but that you bring up the mass times velocity because uh, it, uh, it uh, explains the origin of, uh, it's called momentum, okay, mass times velocity. Uh, momentum is uh, the um, English, uh, I call it English Esperanto, uh, not even a language, of movimento, uh, the Italian word, alla Galileo Galilei, for movement. So yes, life is movement, okay? Okay, but uh, what we use 
Then we the, cannot have enough of it. The animals don't use the, uh, the device for, for their moving. We use also bike, uh, motor, uh, uh, car, uh, plane, yes? Oh, and no, in no, this actually, case, we yeah. ha you have uh, the situation when our life it depends on uh, these devices. Uh, uh, okay. yeah? And the safety. It's important. When I when I us. okay fine. When I get together yes. with uh, with um, with people who know animal design, <coughs> my father was a veterinarian, so I miss him very much. He would uh, come to you with examples of animals that use uh, uh, vehicles in order to have greater access. Uh, uh, colleagues from biology will tell you about the. Uh, parasites that uh, uh, ride on uh, animals in order to basically have greater access to new territories in which to spread. Uh, it's called symbiosis. Uh, you've seen the little birds uh, uh, riding on the backs of everything, uh, uh, say, uh, on an African safari. Uh, so this idea of uh, using other movers in order to get uh, greater access is uh, not a human discovery. There's uh, a lot more to it. It is the fact that um, the uh, mover with its uh, uh, vehicle, say, uh, talk about the uh, humans here, uh, does a lot of uh, not moving, meaning uh, uh, in a garage, uh, we sleep in our beds at night. Uh, that discovery was made by animals a long time ago. It's called niche construction. So uh, having home, having a shelter, having, a, you call it safety, is, uh, is, um, is not a new idea in the animal realm. The more I predict these things that come up, all the way to the climate, the more I see that uh, we are not uh, special, meaning that the things that we, uh, we uh, now enjoy uh, through the ingenuity of those who came before us are of the same nature, of the same physics, that uh, the other things that uh, animals have been doing for a long time. There are animals that use tools, you know, to crack nuts, to uh, fend off uh, predators. They, uh, they are animals who uh, use uh, tricks, such as a camouflage to look bigger than they are, to, to frighten would-be attackers, uh, you see? Uh, so uh, if you look at the big picture, you, uh, uh, you actually, I like to laugh at, uh, at Darwin. Darwin uh, was a visionary who uh, took people uh, uh, to a, three steps down to show that there, uh, uh, there's a commonality of design in the apes and, uh, and humans. I'm, uh, I think that the commonality is uh, much, much deeper than that, uh, meaning uh, it, uh, it welcomes into the uh, big picture the inanimate, the inanimate, the uh, so-called uh, technology evolution, which is actually our own evolution, and on and on. <coughs> Thank you. Further questions or comments? I, I have one. So I thought I answered all the questions, no? Okay, no. go ahead. So, so when you talked about wealth distribution, wealth, yeah. distribution of wealth or knowledge or other things that mm. we value, mm -hmm. so, uh, so I understand that because in society is like a medium in which some things flow, like, like, like wealth, for example, like money or other commodities. Money or, is not flowing. I can knowledge. talk about that now. So then, do you, are, are you, is the prediction that there is no stable situation that's more egalitarian, that the, the, the only stable uh, state of, of affairs is uh, some kind of distribution of wealth or, or access to other commodities that is kind of unjust in, in moral terms? Oh, you're using wealth. words that, uh, that uh, are getting my uh, uh, blood to boil. Uh, I'll get to the unjust in just a second. Uh, the, um, uh, the unstable, uh, in fact, uh, let me put on the screen the facts, and then I'll tell you about that. <laughs> okay, so, uh, what you see in this alignment is, uh, is a nature itself. Um, this kind of plot I can make with, um, uh, with the movement of uh, water in the river basin, the movement on the horizontal, and on the vertical, some other measure of, uh, of the uh, physics of the hierarchy. 
meaning that <coughs> the many the many smaller are one end, the few larger are uh, at the other end. All together, all together, these uh, few larger and many small are moving the same stuff. They are actually moving hand in glove. And this is the natural uh, uh, flow architecture. Now, in society, in society, uh, because the society is, uh, is uh, constituted by uh, human beings, there is also, uh, obviously, uh, the individuals in society come with, uh, with uh, feelings, attitudes, culture, and uh, emotion that's uh, human. And one uh, kind of emotion that's uh, irrepressible, and it's always present, is uh, called envy. Envy. And so uh, what you uh, and I call... Um, what well, I call a non-uniform distribution, uh, others call inequality, triggers this, uh, this uh, feeling of envy. Envy is the cause of instability in the society. It leads to all sorts of, uh, you know, from uh, the history of Europe, uh, um, horrible, horrible uh, uh, changes in social organization uh, leading to uh, large uh, whole-scale murder, okay? And so what, what does an advanced society do in order to prevent those cataclysms? An advanced society engages in, um, in uh, uh, tweaking, tweaking the natural design in order to keep the so-called inequality in check. So uh, in the, the most recent work that I've done, coincidentally with my PhD student here in this third row, raise your hand because you are now the expert, We've shown that if you uh, leave one of these flow systems uh, uh, to behave naturally, uh, inequality is uh, much more pronounced than if you do not leave it uh, by itself. That is, if you do not uh, in, inject in the design some um, features of, um, of uh, not exactly wealth redistribution, but uh, providing greater access to the, uh, to the many smaller entities that previously did not have much access. So this attitude of, uh, of bringing the, um, the previously neglected into the flow is as old as w Western civilization. We have um, uh, literacy as one very good example, okay? We have uh, obviously education at all levels, all the way to higher education these days. Um, there's uh, um, emancipation is another word for it. So these efforts are leading all the way to uh, um, social, um, you know, economic help, we call it uh, social security in the U.S., you know, uh, government uh, assured pensions and stuff. These are the, uh, the small uh, changes in, uh, in, uh, in design that keep uh, society on a uh, 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 steady course as opposed to a, a violent one, okay? Uh, and we know that it works because uh, if you compare societies that ha have been doing this sort of thing with others that uh, have not done uh, enough of it yet, you'll see that the latter are the, the territories where uh, uh, in violence, uh, upheaval, war, um, uh, revolution, uh, these things are, are, are happening, still happening today on the globe. Now, the thing about, you say, injustice, <coughs> uh, the f injustice, the, it's an emotion like envy. Um, injustice, unfortunately, is, uh, is a very dangerous word because it, the meaning of that word is highly personal, highly personal. The uh, person who is driven by envy uh, feels uh, injustice, that the neighbor has uh, more than he has. The neighbor who is expropriated by the, uh, by the envious uh, neighbor also feels injustice. You see here, a flow has occurred from the one who has to the one who doesn't have, and 
both ends of that flow feel injustice for precisely upside down reasons. So in, in my view, the word injustice is uh, obviously below, is, <laughs> is not in the eye of the beholder, it is in the, uh, in the flesh in the flesh and life of the beholder, and it's very dangerous. When I hear the word injustice, I ask uh, myself, uh, of whom is this person talking? So it's worth avoiding the, uh, the conflict or the instability. It's really important to avoid the instability. Thank you. Steve, let's have one last question, because we've almost exhausted the time, but there you go. Thank you. So it will be quick, just out of curiosity. Uh, I would like to quickly refer to the beginning of your presentation when you are saying uh, about the, the differences in time perception at the beginning, that the mass of, of an animal, of a human, is bigger, the, the slower times go, you may say. Uh, and I would like to ask you if would you say that it actually refers to the time gravity dilatation theory in a way that mass is bigger, the time goes slower in a way? I am actually, I didn't follow what you said. Um, you're referring to animal locomotion or to the perception that, uh, that the time flies faster? The perception. The perception. The perception. Yeah, the, um, okay, very, let me summarize briefly the, uh, the argument. The human mind uh, receives fewer um, impressions that things have changed. The, the mind is getting older. Aging has a, in the human mind is uh, like a, a camera that uh, clicks less and less frequently. Okay, the, this is the physics of, uh, of the saccade and all the other things. Okay, so now uh, the human mind uh, became old uh, after it was young. When the human mind was young, okay, uh, the human mind was uh, used to uh, uh, sunset arriving at a particular point, uh, meaning after a particular number of uh, such uh, clicks. And now, uh, now in old age, uh, the uh, sunset is arriving my, much sooner because the clicks are fewer, you see. Another way to, to understand the, my little story is that uh, time, time is uh, in the mind of the observer. Time is, is the name for perceived change in the surroundings. And if you have a slower and slower uh, camera that takes uh, snapshots, then uh, that particular time is uh, running faster before uh, sunset arrives. Or the year arrives uh, uh, faster and faster when winter returns, you see. This I actually, you may not be, may not be aware, but Professor Bajan has published a real scientific paper about this quite recently, right? So if, yeah, right. I'm, uh, if you, you can I, reach me by email, you can probably locate me and I can send you a reference. I was already advertising this paper. Yeah, I can put friends. it on the screen if you're... But that's quite an... By the way, everything I showed concept. you... Okay, everything I showed you here is has been published based on peer review in uh, physics journals and biology journals, everything. Um, in, uh, in this kind of um, work, uh, it, is, it is paramount, it is absolutely essential to stick to, stick to the physics uh, and to shy away from opinion. I often get, when I give talks, I get asked about what is your political opinion about this. Well, uh, I have an op a political opinion, there were maybe several, but, but that's not the point. The point is the physics, the fact that something you can measure and you can uh, repeat the measurement or you can invite uh, anybody else to do the same thing uh, to, try, to try to prove me wrong. And uh, this hasn't happened since 1996 when um, I decided to uh, introduce in thermodynamics this uh, uh, principles of, principle of physics. 
which has been around all the time, by the way, through the hunches of many people, but under uh, a dis meaning in a disorganized fashion. So there's a history to this, uh, to this so-called principle that uh, I don't have time to discuss now. But um, I, I'm not alone to, to to see the need for it. You see. Thank you. So I guess we'll finish with that. So let's thank Professor Bazan again. And I look forward to meeting you after the summer break for the next lecture in the fall. Thank you. In October. Thank you. <laughs>